Consumers Real Estate Show is brought to you by American Real Estate, the consumer oriented media company, bringing you all the greatest resources and latest information in all things residential real estate. Now, here's your host and answer man, Barry Miller, along with consumer guy Larry Stanley. Okay, Barry Miller here, the Barry and Larry Show. Home buyers, in particular, realtors, always welcome. And non uh, uh, licensed agents who are not realtors, eh, you're actually welcome here too. You'll have to put up with some of the truth, though. We wonder why you don't commit dollars to better taxes for all homeowners. That's one of the big thrusts of our National Association of Realtors. Why don't you support the general buying and selling? The great United States of America and the organization that does that masterful lobbying is the National Association of Realtors. So shame on you for not being a member of the Realtor organization. Oh, and you'll hear on this show that occasionally we don't approve of the lack of action of the National Association Real various issues like training agents across the country on what's going on. Economically, hey, Larry, you're a consumer guy. You look at data now and then. You receive that. How often does the National read with the end price of existing family homes in metropolitan areas, over 200 areas they cover? How often does that come out? Once a quarter. Once a quarter, exactly. So this time, there are, this quarter is the, it's now the fourth quarter of 2020. Right. What percentage of those 200-plus communities, cities, really, had pre year from that? A hundred percent. I don't think I've ever seen that number before. I have not answered about that. I am planning to this next week because I don't think we've ever seen. A hundred percent of them were and are showing positive appreciation. And this is important to keep in mind. The markets are strong. All, well, are they strong all over the United States? In general, yes, they are. Oh, well, specific than generals here on this show, Larry. That's oh, then we're pri- okay, that's private. Okay, private. That is all about. What percentage, approximately, it's a nice round number, what percentage of those 200-plus cities had and are having appreciation annually? Increase in home values over 10%. Do you know the answer to no, that? No, I don't know the answer. Jerry? Mm, I don't. 80%. Wow. 161 cities, major cities, metropolitan areas in this country, are having appreciation over 10%. I think a good economy, Larry. Would you go that far? Oh, I think it's an outstanding economy. And which challenges you and me to find hot spot cities for investors that will produce even better returns. And it's a challenge to all of us here, Sherry, you and Barry and all of our guests. And today we're going to fill in for Josh Beans. He is a community bank's mortgage lender. Okay. He was scheduled to be with us and then had a wonderful, very, very family event happening all day long, really, from 8 until 4-ish, and, and so I'm going to have some fun with him and, and our listeners, asking our listeners to call him at between 4 and 6 o'clock today, because he's usually available all day Saturdays, and today it's a very, very special event, and, and I said, John, do you have to go to that event, and he was ready to, you know, make some compromise, and it's, uh-uh-uh, it's too special, so he, he's not with us today, but it's a challenge to all of our listeners to be strong buyers, I want to be strong sellers. And what do sellers want, Larry? The highest dollar price, typically, correct? Oh, absolutely. And we're going to be talking to you about your seller spot in society right now because you are. I'm going to call you an active home seller. Your home is not actively in the MLS yet. And we're going to talk about what happened this week with you and our own consumer guy, Larry Stanley. But first, I want to say it's challenging 
the high economics are not making life just a bed of roses for everybody. What about buyers, Sherry? Is it easy for home buyers because this economy is doing so well and over 80% of these have annual appreciation, increased price value of their homes? Does that make it easy for buyers? Actually, it doesn't make it easy for the buyer at all unless they have hired a top agent and a top lender to assist them Uh through the journey. So let me get this right. Mm -hmm. If they've hired a top agent and a top lender, it's going to be easy for buyers. It's not going to be easy, but at least they have an opportunity to plan. And I encourage all the buyers out there to do that, make that plan. And not get lost in the shuffle. What is it like being a home buyer, Larry? You're one right now. Well, the, you know, there are more houses that come on the market each day than I would have thought. What I have to do is be prepared to look at those houses and make four or five hours of the gallon good. Say that again because I think that some people think you said four or five weeks. Say that no, again. no, I said four to five hours. Oh, not days. No, I don't think it's good because you don't know what the real estate agent for the bot, for the seller is going to do if they get it. Are they going to wait for more offers or are they going to accept the first offer that comes along? What are most of them going to do, Sherry? Most of them are going to accept the first one that comes in. Yeah, shame on them and shame on the sellers for going that way so many times because it doesn't buy for for the seller. But we don't have time to go into all of those details. But but let's talk about the markets, Larry, and tie it into insurance concerns. How many days of inventory in the entire Colorado Springs market is there right now? About nine days. Oh, and how nine many days, days of inventory and higher? Um, about 12 days. Yeah. So the median price. What is the median price in the Denver metro area, Larry? $555,000. Yeah. $155,000 in direction. Uh-huh. Up, and it's going to continue to go up for at least the next three to six months. Any of you, please, if you are thinking that prices are going to drop, get real, get data, get informed, become aware of reality. And reality is that Denver's at 555000 median price. Half the homes in Denver are selling over. 555,000 Colorado Springs comparable house 410,000 what is the median price for that same single family home in the entire United States of America go ahead Barry 315,000 almost a hundred less almost a hundred thousand less than Colorado Springs Colorado Springs is about $145,000 less. This is the same house. 2,400 square feet, three to four bedrooms, two to three baths, likely a two-car garage. That same, likely a lot size of 7,500 to 11,000 square feet. That same house costs various amounts throughout the country. But, but. The median price and below, Larry, about how many days of inventory in Colorado Springs? About three days. Three days. What does that mean to you? You don't have three days to make up your mind. You don't have two days to make up your mind, typically to make an offer. To make an offer, you have, say it again, four to five Hours. hours. That's reality, Larry. Yeah, and, you know, the real estate agents aren't, doing the sellers any good when they won't leave it on the market for a few days out competitive out. So that if you got that way, I wouldn't hire you as real estate agents. But you don't. You understand that a auction environment is going to make me money. No, you said you got guys. Who are you talking about? I'm talking about Barry Miller and Sherry Cinnamon. Because he hired us to be his agent. We he said he wanted the maximum dose. 
and he would go with our unique route as he just gets more and more offers. But now let's take a look at the all-important buyer loan, and let's talk about what Josh was going to talk about. The rates are still very low. low. Very low. It's a great time to refinance. You need to think about refinancing. And how low are they? Oh, approximately three and a quarter percent. Fixed rate if you're getting a conventional loan. percent if you're getting an FHA or VA loan. That is very low. Now, if you've heard some more truth that's out there, rates have been creeping up lately. If you follow the market like Josh does, they've been going up. Not it was not so till it, but AJ has been a little bit and I'm say they come down a little. And right now the trend is hold or go up on interest rates. But they're very, very good. You owe it to yourself, listeners, right from Larry and Barry to and ask him if you should refinance or not. He's not going to just tell you to do it. He's going to ask you questions. What's your circumstance? Give Josh Veenstra a call. 303-921-5000. Fun for Barry and Larry, too, and also for Josh. He's tied up till 4 o'clock. Call him between 4 and 6 o'clock today. No special obligation, but, but the first three callers to him today, between 4 and 6, get a show to a bread. So he doesn't know this. So give him a call. And you have to have legitimate questions about anything pertaining to home loan, by the way, in any state. But in particular, right here, it means Dell Van Essen. Dell is out of town this 303-921-5506. The first three people are the heads of who call him. taking four and six and just, oh, yeah, Barry and Larry said to call. Have some fun with him. He's a fun guy and a wonderful man. Very, very experienced. Barry Miller along with Sherry Cinnamon and along with your consumer guy, Larry Stanley. Okay, we are back. This is Barry Miller, along with Consumer Guy, Larry Stanley, and Sherry Cinnamon. We're talking with now Larry as the seller that he is. He's an active home seller. And thank you. So many callers have been talking to me this week, Larry, about you and about what they're learning uh, in the process. But let's get right to that important decision that you made this week. And it's very important our listeners hear this and to, to know that such decisions are okay. But it, it was, I call, I'm calling it a major decision. Oh, we didn't think so, but you were concerned. It, it, what about, what are the ramifications yeah. of that decision? You were concerned, how did they adjust it? The moment of your home be active? T- t- tell our listeners what, what key decision you made this week and how it went when you talked to your agents about it. Well, the decision I made was to delay by one week going active as with my house on the marketplace. The reason, just so people know, is it, last week was a very hectic week and I didn't get done what I needed to get done, so I asked for a week delay. And my agents, Barry and Sherry, had no problem with the delay. They didn't feel it would impact the price of the house or the interest in my house. So I then went forward with that decision. And the truth is we're not using it because we can't officially with the Realtor MLS rules. It's not going to help or hurt you one bit, Yeah, one bit. To, to move activity. Now, look, we're going to say his house is going to go active on April 15th now, okay, rather than April 8th. We were not going to put it active this coming Thursday. Do you remember why? Because Easter is Sunday. Easter is Sunday. I mean, look, uh, 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 lots of things are going on. You know, I mean, Passover starts, thank you, happy yeah. Passover to so many of you. That starts now, et cetera, and, and, and a good Friday's coming up. Wasn't, we're going to put it on the house, on the market the day before Good Friday, and 
weekend of Easter, et cetera. So, but, but the big reason was you had personal business activities take priority this week, yes. and you didn't get what kind of things done? Mainly, well, two things, decluttering, and then I have a, a list of th- repairs that need to be made. There, we're talking very, very minor stuff. But I still need to get people out to do the repairs. And out of respect for a number of our listeners, Larry, who did talk, you don't know this, but talk to me this week. Well, now, wait a minute. Is, is he having to do all those repairs because of the market? Doesn't he have the opportunity to not do them? I did, you know, share confidentially on calls that these were pretty minor repairs. But let, let our listeners know how you are as a seller, why you're doing these, and what one or two of them are. Because I don't want these impacting the sale price of the house or people making offers because there's a, several minor things that need to be repaired. I just want to get it done so the house is as good as it can get when people look at it. Now, realistically, though, a couple of minor leaks in two sinks we're not going to prevent buyers from making offers. You knew that, but yes. you felt as a conscientious seller that you should just take care of those and not have any any really hurdles on the inspection at all. That's right. And the, the plumbing was repaired Okay, this okay. week, but there there's an electrical problem. I've got to get radon taken care of, and I have two extremely minor roof issues that I've got to get somebody out. I don't do roofs. <laughs> okay, well, you don't do radon mitigation either. No. Did you get bids yet on the ma- radon? No, I'm going to do that on Monday. That's uh, It was just a crazy Just week, didn't Barry. get it done. Sherry, yeah. let's share with our listeners so they know that radon can be, uh, uh, it is a gas, okay, and if it has certain numbers above government EPA numbers, really the number, the I call it the unmagic number, 4.00. If it's higher than that, there, 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 it shows there's a higher gas than EPA says might be safe. Might be. I mean, they say it that way, too. And then Larry's was a tad higher than that, and he has chosen to have mitigation. But should sellers be worried that that's a huge, big expense? Not anymore. Now these radon mitigation systems have become much more affordable, and that's another reason why we like to look at it ahead of time before we get a house on the market because it's knowledge is power, and if you're at 4.0 or 4.2 people curious, you can prepare yourself. What is it, seven, eight hundred dollars yeah. anymore? Under a thousand dollars? Typically under a thousand. And it's marketable. And it's marketable. It's good. It makes the home set and ready to go. Depending how your basement concrete is configured, it could be seven hundred to nine hundred ninety dollars. A lot of them are like seven hundred ninety dollars, eight hundred ninety dollars. $990. I mean, the highest one I've ever seen was $1,150. They had a different kind of, uh, they had the basement normal, seven eight hundred, and then they had an extra couple hundred because of a crawl space that they had under the family room. And that, and that radon company, legitimate company, legitimate company, felt that they should put some piping around there, too. And they did. And, and it was like, and the seller said, oh, I thought it was going to be four or $5,000. That's why we're sharing this information, to let you know, sellers, it's $1,000. What if the seller doesn't have $1,000? I've had a number of sellers in the last five years who've had the high rate on numbers and said, I don't have the $1,000 cash right now. Guess what? We got it done when? After closing. Seller paid for it. Did they have to through negotiations? Maybe not. But the seller said, no, Barry, keep your special patented type approach going. Get us the top dollar, and we'll gladly do the radon. We didn't want that obstacle, Larry, like you. We didn't want that hurdle to bother 5, 10, 20, 25% of the buyers, maybe maybe 55%, whatever it was. Larry, you were smart enough to say, don't have that hurdle. I'll take care of it. 
So sure, it's nice if it's done, but also buyers say, hey, we're, buyers are human beings, too, and they say, that's fine if it's going to be fixed after closing, within the first month after closing, at seller's expense, no problem. But thank you, Sherry, for letting our listeners know it's typically under and almost always under $1,000. So, Larry, you had quite a week, and that is a big decision, but your quite a week was not your actions as a seller as much as, oh, can I delay a week? And, yes, the market will be just as strong the second week and third week of April as it will be the first and second week of April. So, Larry, it turns out to be a good week, and thanks for sharing that with our our listeners, some of whom are becoming sellers, some of whom are gathering information to be a seller later in the year. But where can all of our listeners go coming up April 17th, Larry? They can come to our um, boot camp and learn the process the 10 steps for buying and the 10 steps for selling a house. It's important that you understand this in advance so that you can participate with your real estate agent in a successful process. Yes, yeah. And Absolutely. It's a safe place, and it's knowledge is power once again, a step-by-step -step place to sell or buy your home. Come to our boot camp. On April the, April the 17th, 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., you'll be happy you did. Cost? The cost Absolutely of it? Absolutely zero. Free. It is free. It, 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 they're munchies. Their coffee and tea. It's a lovely facility, easy to get to in the Denver Tech Center area. Not a problem. But the problem is limited space. Get your reservation in. It is limited still by COVID protocol and rules, and so we are limited to number of people who could attend. We're at, we're, it's about half full so far. Get your reservation in now. If you think you want to know more about how you will be a, the smartest home seller, be it this April or next April or the April and May after that or a year and a half after, it's your timeline as you saw today, you set the timeline, but make your reservation now for Saturday, April 17th, two hours, and all you have to do to make your reservation, Larry, is call or text us at 303-888-3788, or you can email us at truth at barryandlarry.com. And that email is truth at barryandlarry.com. We had some listeners this week say, well, we sent you some things, and they came back. Get this. This was very complimentary, and they meant it that way. They put trust oh, at barryandlarry.com. Thank you. Very, very nice listeners. And But we got that straightened out. Yes, we got also, Larry, trust at Barry, Barry and Larry. But our email right now is truth, T-R-U-T-H, truth at barryandlarry.com. Use it and get your reservation in. Hey, do it now because we're taking a break. We'll be back. Welcome back to the Barry and Larry Show. This is Larry Stanley, your consumer guy. I'm with Barry Milk and Sherry Cinnamon, and we have something different to talk to you it's about. It's been a while, Larry, it since has we've had, been. you get to say the special two words, call in. Open lines. Open lines. Call in. We're going to have that for the last segment of the show. That's not now. It's going to start. Any questions you have, any comments about home buying, home selling. Many of you have said to us in the last couple of months, hey, guys, can you have open lines for us? Of course we can. You know, we can always do that. We, You know we have more than enough material to cover a three-hour show on home buying and home selling. Every Saturday, we are prepared with over, not exaggerating, over two hours to three hours of material so that it's pertinent to you and what our topical outlines are. But we're going to have open lines at eight, that phone number at 843 to call in is 303-713-8255. That's K House open line number 303 713 talk. You get to talk. 
we get to listen and we were signing the tape and let's have some good radio chatter this morning. Any items, anything, not just what we're talking about, Larry the seller, or you as a seller, Larry the buyer, or you as a buyer. No, anything pertaining to residential real estate, especially in Colorado, but you could ask us about the, the United States, too, or, or markets elsewhere. But mostly, let's focus on home buying thoughts and questions, home selling thoughts and questions. Call us. Open lines today starting at 843-303-713-8255. Now, Larry, let's come back to you, the home buyer. You're on that ladder, and you're moving upward. And what happened this week on that? We just looked at more houses as they come on the market, and we're narrowing down what we're what we want in the house so that when we put when we start looking for a house we're prepared completely prepared i want to make sure that we can move quickly three to five hours after a house comes on the market we need to make a bid for it if that's what i i want to do and now you larry you i as you said want to do now you said earlier in the show that you noticed that there were a few more homes coming to you than you suspected. Tell our, our listeners again, remind them why you're seeing those homes and from whom and how that process goes very quickly. But the results for you, and have a comment or two on inventory in the Denver market in Colorado Springs. Well, Sherry and Barry set up a, um, that uh, an arrangement so that I get an email every time a house comes on the market in the area that I have selected to shop for a house. Not only the geographic area, Larry, as you know, and listeners, yeah. not just the geographic Look, here, heck, he, There were over 50 items he could have looked at, Sherry, right? Absolutely. And he did. Were. And then he selected the particular dozen or so that fit what he's looking for, including geographic area. But it's interesting, and and normally this time of the year, Larry, there would be more inventory coming up. And, oh, I'm going to talk about how much the Colorado Springs inventory increased in the last week over the prior week. And you'll, you are correct. There is some added inventory. It's still only lasting three to nine days, but... But but uh, I'll give the numbers out in a minute because I don't want our our listeners to think that there's lots and lots of increased inventory. But go ahead, Larry. We're all smiling here because we know the numbers. It's seven more houses are on the market <laughs> this week than last week. Seven Ooh. more houses, and from a year ago, that's 55 percent fewer houses. That's how tight. This market, sure, 80% of the markets are having 10% or more appreciation. Markets for the first time in their known, I'm talking to many of those markets, like Augusta, Georgia. I had lovely talks with them this week. And it's like, oh, my gosh, we're getting multiple bids. And I just, I just listened quietly. Yes, it started. It didn't start in the country here, but Denver had it six years ago. Colorado Springs three and four years ago. And they're experiencing it in many cities across the country for the first time in their professional history. But here's the fact. Colorado Springs has over 50% fewer listings than last year. By the way, 55% to be precise. Denver metro area, Sherry, as you know, 60%. Fewer listings this year than last year. And frankly, Larry, while the Springs went up seven homes to 391, okay, Denver went down 34 homes. Denver has 1,240 homes. These are single-family homes that we keep records of. So it is a tight, tight market. But, Larry, let's come back to you as a buyer and just share. Do you see anything, any homes of interest this week? Yes, I did, and I really debated whether to go start looking at them and decided to wait another week or two before I get serious at looking at houses. Okay. But I'm narrowing down what I want. I can look at now 
something that says five bedrooms. And I just know I'm not interested in a five bedroom house. It's just too many bedrooms for to be clean and everything. So that was a good find. Yeah, that's okay. right. Good. Sherry, any comments about Larry? Buyer. Well, Larry the buyer, are you getting excited? Somewhat excited. It is always fun to do something new and different, but there's just so much going on in my life that it's hard to get totally excited. Well, with more property on market, even if it's only seven, are you finding more choices? Do you need us to filter that search at all? Do you want us to put it at four bedrooms instead of five? I, let's talk about that after the show. Is Good question. Yeah, yeah. But well, okay. let's talk about it after right. the show, please. All right. Okay. And typically, I'm going to be saying don't change it because... It's better to see yeah. the options. He's not having dozens of options. The two or three more options is not enough new homes, uh, new listings coming on. That's just going to be my point. recommendation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, and then, and, then. and that's what I was looking for. But, but they're friend. the right kind of questions. Is yeah. there anything on that list that you could say that that you didn't want? Okay. We're going to take our break, and then remember, we're going to have open lines. Now, when you call in, it's open lines to iHeart. 303-713-8255. Please give Ryan, thank you, Ryan. Please, please give Ryan your name, the city you're calling from, maybe your topic, too. Your question is okay, but for sure your name and phone number. Keep it easy. Keep it simple. We'll have the call come through, and we'll gladly take it here. It's Sherry Cinnamon is here. Humor guy, Larry Stanley. Larry has never been agent, not planning to be one, never been a broker in real estate. However, Larry, in his family time with all primary residences, has sold 10, 10, homes. 10 homes and bought 11 and now is looking to buy, sell that one. That'll be his 11th sale and then purchase the 12th home. And that sale and buy is happening in the Colorado Springs marketplace. So that's what's going on, but it's especially for you. We're here. Open lines, by the way, you're going to be hearing data and you're going to be hearing other items about the topic today, buying and selling real estate when, they, when we come back. Thanks, Ryan and Jesse, for having good music and good, good singing, good sound today. This is Barry Miller, your consumer advocate here with your consumer guy, Stanley and your consumer friend, Sherry Cinnamon. We are here at, at, at Mount Albert Studio, Colorado Master area, which is in the Remax Masters Millennium office. Wonderful, wonderful office to be in. And we're so happy that we have a lovely, lovely new Mount Albert Studio, in which we are presiding right now. So, Larry, we have a question. A gentleman called in. And he could not uh, stay on the line. Thank you, Frank. And Frank's call was, why are you buying and selling? I mean, these 11 <laughs> homes and you know that you've purchased in 10. And, but he had a good question. And many people think, was it the thrill of the chase was part of his question. But tell our listeners why you have had those. And really, I know you well enough that this one's a little different. So if you don't mind, Larry... Share why why you're moving this time. Most of my uh, change of houses was because of job related issues. I was transferred to new cities and things like that. Now you said most of them, essentially all of them, were that reason, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, there there were a couple in Colorado Springs that we would change because trying to figure out what we wanted to do with our lives, and that's really what's going on now. I want that side out. It's just too large. It's too hard to maintain. I want a simpler, easier life. I don't want to maintain five acres of land. I don't want any of that stuff. So it, we're going to, I'm going to downsize, and that's really the whole purpose is just to simplify my life. Good, good. Many, many people are in the downside area of their home life and looking to do that. It, it happens. Okay, it's a, it, some people call it right sizing. I think in reality it's still downsizing. 
pricing in your case would be no downside I think but many many people's case it is right size and remember I trace a bakers you like buying display article and not they would say like they were in their home maybe it had acre but it had a yard work they were typically buying condos and townhomes in the coastal areas again Florida heavily benefited from that so and people now again people thousands moving to Florida it's a hot market in Florida and so whether it's downsizing or right sizing as a term you are doing that now and that's your choice so one of the decisions I had to make Barry was to move different unity I just it, it wasn't right when my grandson lives in Colorado Springs I want to in this area Okay, that's good at our listeners. No, thanks for sharing that, Frank. Thanks for calling in. Other listeners, we have open lines for a few more minutes to call in. Five, six, thirty. Please give us a call if you have any items. Don't worry, we're going to get right to share. And she's going to give us now her take on the topic of the day, which is the buyer being in his fourth week as a seller and as a buyer. He made that vision as a seller which I found there too, delaying going active in the MLS for a week. And so, Sherry, tell us what your take is on, on, on Larry, the buyer. So on this is to remind myself that sometimes the seller slash buyer does have to delay by a week, maybe two, for one reason or another, which on the seller side is what we talked about before. Choose an agent at least two months ahead of time if you can so you can get prepared. Then on the buyer's side, you can be looking at the, those homes, Larry, on PPAR, mm -hmm. on Pike Peak. You can be looking at them as you then we have more of these coming on the market. You're going to have more and more choices, and then you're not going to be stressed out. Give that week or two because you have major, their, their full responsibility to you. They're going to be just fine with that. And... The two of you, Barry and Sherpa, that was a relief to have made the decision. It um, depressurized us. Often, me. often in my career, I've seen it as a new agent, med intermediate, now, you know, a quote, emeritus, I was going to say advanced in years. <laughs> it's also true, okay? But advanced in experience to so many really good buyers and sellers so conscientious toward us their agent and we thank you for that consideration but what was our response larry it's okay it's not going to affect us we're here to help you we'll be okay but in him was some concern of of what his situation is would it affect us negatively so now we have a point what's the median hidden home for Jason Parker well that's interesting because I was pulling up the site tab Parker a daily reason that I call you uh, I, I'm sure you gave Ryan your phone number we'll get that after the show I'll, I'll call you oh oh Dave are you online I'm online oh good okay Good. Well, I don't want you to give your uh, on the air, but I'll give you, uh, by the way, it'll be between 10 and 10.30 today, give you the right part because we have seen home for the kind of That's fine. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Cause can, so, you for your question, I will get that information, and I'll okay. share it on air next we week. Some theory, and then I'll pull some of them uh, up. Uh, out and we'll share that in price next week. So thank you for that call. And that we'll we'll do that. We could do that more often. Not a problem. I was going to go to this comment uh, as some data. Larry, I was going to pick on you a little less, Sherry, because you are the more the researcher here. But with the median home price in the Denver area, by the way, I'm going to stick my neck out and give an estimate for what I part. I'm going to pay part in the end, just like we do. Denver is five thousand median price. Parker will be of that. No, if it is, but I will. I think I'll just the six fifty. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my uh, uh, neck out. I'm not afraid to do it. I'm, I, I work partner in a hundred. I'll go there, but but we'll find out, and I'll let Jake or I'll let our, our listeners know next week. But on on the low end, the base nationally at three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. We have Colorado Springs median price. For a detached home, four hundred and ten thousand. 
three Denver. Okay, uh, okay. I have two hundred and ten cities that I'm looking at from the quarterly report. Four in high. Okay. Okay. San Jose, California, has a median price of what? over a million. Over a million three hundred eighty-five. Just in the country, they rank number one. Not not the number one is. Good. Okay. Oh. They are number one. What number is older, Colorado? I'm going to guess, of course, but the, the third or fourth largest, most expensive. Share it again. Um, what number, number ranking is What number ranking? I beg your pardon. Let's say seven. It four. Is seven. seven. It okay. is seven. Oh. Get this. I just... just Finalize yeah. this. This is not number easy to remember. What rank is Denver, Aurora, Lakewood, Denver metro area out of 210 homes? If Boulder's seventh, where does Denver rank? About 30th. I was going to say 13th. Very good, good Jerry. 14th. 14th. Oh. 14th. Okay. Seven. Follow, follow this. 14. Now we that are kept us so that this is heading at Tina's is Denver, so Fort Collins must be twenty first. Correct. Wow. Fort Collins. We have three metropolitan areas in our in, in our state that are in the top one of the media places in the country. Wow. So that's going on. Colorado Springs made it on the first page. I don't have their number. We'll give that next week. But seven. 1421. We're into our last minute, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Next week, we're going to have open lines in the final segment of the show, like we did. You can write down the number now, 303 713 8255. But more important, we'll thing you for you, the consumers. Here's the number for your reservation for that. Larry? 303 888 Three seven eight. When is it? On the seventeenth of April, ten thirty to twelve thirty. Seventeenth of April. Coming up fairly soon. A boot camp for you, Sherry. Thanks for being with us, and uh, Larry. Thanks for all you're doing as the home seller and the home. Larry, now we say 